part of this is really thanking a lot of people for uh, making the fellowship a success and allowing me to take the credit. Um, I, the Choir of Learning Science, it, it came at the right time. The OLT was the ALTC and I got a fellowship just before the LTC, the LTC closed down. So I, I'd like to acknowledge that you know, their support was tremendous. The fellowship came at the right time. The topic, inquiry, has become a really sort of hot topic for various reasons, not linked to me. And part of the fellowship was to actually keep the momentum going in that area. What is inquiry? Why is it important? Can we support people? Can we get something to change? My emphasis for my fellowship wasn't on a new pedagogy or instructional strategy is can we over the period of time of the fellowship push things along and actually get practice to change in, in, a, in various institutions around the country. And that was for you like my measure. Was something different at the end compared to the beginning? And if it wasn't well it was maybe it's interesting but of no long term value. These are the people I should need to um, acknowledge seriously. Andrea was my project officer and takes a lot of credit for what happened. Uh, um, Helen McGilbrick was um, my external evaluator, and all the reference group, and you might recognize some of the faces, uh, had an actual hands-on input. It wasn't just a, a set of names that you know you put on, on an application and then you never go and talk to them. They were all very fully involved in the fellowship in one form or another. Um, and, I, and I recognize John, Manju, Kathy Foley, Roy Tasker, Mick Healy, and Sue Jones. What was it about? Well, when I started, I thought, uh, how can we get things to happen? To happen? change and um, Stephen Billet had got a, a, um, an OLT grant or an LTC grant and he had this really good idea give people some money turn yourself into a grant awarding body and give people some money to change things see in universities you don't get some discretionary money you've got to say what you're going to use it for he had this great idea of giving people a couple of thousand dollars and say right I want you to do this but what you do with the money I give you is really up to you Right, great idea. So what we did was I, I got people to do expressions of interest. This time two years ago, a little hand it went around, expressions of interest, something to do with inquiry, and we supported a number of groups uh, across the country. Here's um, Kirsten and Kay were at UQ and Julie and Nicola are at um, UNE to develop something that maybe is as on the cusp of developing anyway, but I could give them some support with money. But more than that, I was out there later on in the year uh, talking to the students, doing focus groups, doing surveys, and it, so that we could actually push along some initiative that would turn into something of value for them. And that they could end up publishing it, getting together with people who have similar interests. This thing in the middle was something that uh, I went, actually was there and uh, saw it in action. Here's, here's the students doing something. I went around and talked to the students. We, we did the focus groups and things. And I did that with all the athletes, all these uh, ALTC fellowship funded activities. So it wasn't here's the money, come send me a report at the end and I'll, and I'll, I'll put it somewhere. It was actually an active involvement. And the other thing about going to see people is I went to see the senior academics there, the Peter Adams of the world, to say, look, your oh, people are doing really good work. Now, Peter knows this already, but not all the senior academics and institutions know that. So it was actually getting it working at a number of levels with the people actually doing the work, with the students actually doing, and all the way up to the senior, the, the, the executive dean, for example, at UQ, to find out how much they knew what was going on and give them the heads up. Other thing that was happened, so put that on one side, not everybody knows what inquiry oriented learning is, and I'm not going to give you a lecture on that, but one thing you want to do is to actually have people immersed in the ideas. So we ran workshops, I ran workshops in different places, this is at QUT, this is at Charles Sturt, this is at ANU, this is at Strathclyde University, where we had people immersed in an inquiry oriented activity. Let's critique it, let's agree, is it just words, then what does it mean? How, do you, how would you support if you were a demonstrator or a teaching assistant? So we actually explored what it, what it meant for the students, what it meant for the academics. And interestingly out of this, people have found this activity and are actually using it with their demonstrator training. For example, um, Jerry here, who's, who's not, I don't think he's pictured here, but his group in Monash were really sort of quite taken with the uh, activity and now they've incorporated it in their uh, teaching assistant um, support and, and, and uh, uh, professional development and it's happened in other places as well in, in, uh, in uh, Flinders they're using it and in uh, Murdoch and elsewhere. Each of the workshops I wrote a report they all did feedback so I actually wrote reports to each of the for each of the workshops and they went back to the people so they didn't just say well that was interesting they could actually um, reflect on what they said and they found out what other people had said got anonymous, so, uh, anonymous um, comments so everybody got to see what everyone else said so they could actually reflect on the value. So it wasn't just you blow in and you blow out and that's it. 
But obviously, there's got to be a website with some of these things. Are, so, you know, that's it there, um, and that's me on the cover. But it, it's meant to bring together some resources. Websites are websites, let's face it. They're, they're, they're important, they're, yeah, but they're not really necessarily that exciting. But things that happen through the fellowship were put on there. Intermediate reports for the athletes, for example, were put on there. And other resources were placed there. One of the key things I did was to try and get the research people together. See, we have research camps and teaching camps, although we don't admit it, uh, in the public, they are, oh, no, well, maybe we do actually, but what we want to do is to get the groups together. I had a national forum where I had it opened by the DVC Research at my university, and the message was inquiry and research, integrated learning is important at undergraduate level because it leads you through to students being interested in research and impacting on the bottom line in research. So the DVC it didn't require any persuasion. He saw the value of that, and so getting him involved and other people who came along with international stature, Gabriella Weaver from Purdue, Mick Healy, mind you, was there doing a terrific talk, and others sort of talking about their developments and their work in that area. Okay. I also went out to CSIRO, and I worked with them as, um, to develop something, because I won't go beyond the usual suspects. Go beyond the usual suspects find out what it is that might be interesting happening out there in, for what we better term, the real world, and bring it into undergraduates. And CSR were really keen on that. So Scott Watkins is working on solar cells, uh, organic solar cells, and we now have, a, at UTS, we trialed a, an inquiry-oriented experiment where students get involved with the research developed solar cells and can do an inquiry experiment in the first year, in a big class. 500 students, we're not talking about a senior subject or cherry-picking students that are really um, perhaps uh, you can obviously you can say they're potentially going to be your researchers because they've done well at school. This is all the students getting some exposure, and that was a key thing for me as well. UTS is, uh, was interested in getting something out of this. Surprise, surprise. This was a national fellowship across science, but UTS, what, where was they getting out of it? We developed through Shirley, who's our DVC teaching and learning, a uh, community of practice to bring in people across from the university, not just science actually from uh, business, from law, from um, <clears throat> design, architecture, and, and building, from faculty of arts and social sciences, to talk about inquiry and what research integrated learning means for them. And that's actually um, up and running, and it's, uh, it's, it's in its, its fledgling state. Whether it survives will be whether or not there's any value in it for people that are involved. OK. The other thing, what, what are the outcomes? Where do you, what, what else has appeared that's of value? Well, we've already heard about the, the good practice guide that Liz and I have put together, which to extent lent to the things that I've learned over the 12 months on my fellowship. So it's good that something goes out there that talks about inquiry and the impact on a very important national issue, which is standards and the threshold learning outcomes. Extension grants. You can take on something that the OLT has supported, whether it's a fellowship or a grant, and you as an institution can say, I would like to pick Les Kirkup's uh, approach to developing professional, uh, oh, and, uh, yeah, okay, so you can get some money out of the ULT um, <coughs> because you can w lean on the work that, that, that's happened in the grant. And the last thing, and maybe I don't need to say this, there's actually going to be something of a, um, uh, a journal issue, special issue, and I think I might leave it there because mind you or Alex will talk about that. So thank you very much. And uh, there are copies of the report which are going to go around there. So thank well, you.